Welcome to this new video in which we will cover the second part of the educational project, building a mobile robot that follows the line. In this video, we will learn how to use the TCS34725 color sensor to send surface color and program the mobile robot to follow a white line on dark ground. In the previous video, we designed the robot, printed it, assembled it, and programmed it to follow the line using the KY033 sensor. The result is that the robot follows the line, but the movement is not smooth and has constant oscillations. This is what we want to avoid with the new approach. This is done by using the color sensor, which gives a continuous value, as well as using PID control to compare the output with the input, the desired value, and correct the resulting error. In the previous part of the project, we installed two KY033 sensors, each of which senses one of the edges of the line. This sensor gives a value of 0 or 1 at its output, and this explains the movement fluctuation. In this part, we will use a single color sensor, TCS34725, that is installed directly to sense the left edge of the line. This sensor gives continuous values. For example, when it is on the white line, it gives a value of 8. This is what interests us this clear value or light intensity. It also gives the values of red, green, and blue, and this can be used in other cases. I will now explain how this sensor works. It is a color sensor that measures the intensity of light in red, green, blue, and transparent colors. This sensor uses a built-in filter to divide incident light into its color components, thus measuring the reflection of light from a surface making it possible to detect color or brightness differences. The way it works is as follows. The sensor emits light and measures the reflected RGB value in addition to the total intensity. This is what concerns us in this project. In the case of a dark floor, the value of the intensity of the reflected light is small, while in the case of a floor that is not dark, a clear floor such as a white stripe, the value of the intensity of the reflected light is greater. To use the information provided by the sensor, we will use a Duino board to process this data. Now, I will do this experiment so that I will connect this sensor to the Arduino board as shown here, then I will download this code to read the sensor data. First, I added the necessary libraries to communicate with the sensor. Then here I configured the sensor, and then I activated the serial communication. Then I started reading the value the sensor provided and printed it out in the serial monitor. The result is as follows. As you can see, in the case of a clear background, the value is larger, approximately equal to 8 in this case. Then if the floor is dark, the value is small as you can see, roughly 2. After I explained how the sensor works, I will now explain how to use it to track this line. The goal is for the robot to stay on the line and the sensor to stay on the left edge. For this line, this means that if the sensor is in the dark place, the robot must turn right until it returns to the edge. Then the same thing if the sensor is completely located on the white place, the robot must rotate to the left for the sensor to return to the edge again. So what does this mean for the edge where the surface changes from black to white? If in the dark place there is a value equal to 2, and in the light place there is a value equal to 8. This means that the edge has an intermediate value between the two, so we will add the 2 with the 8 and divide it by 2, and this gives 5. To follow the edge, the sensor must constantly measure a value equal to 5. Now we will calculate the error. If the robot or sensor is in the dark place, this means that the error is equal to 3. If the robot is in the light area, the error is equal to minus 3. Every time, we subtract the measured value from the average value or the desired value we always want to obtain to ensure we follow the line. So how do we use these values? The error value in the dark place and the error value in the light place, as well as the average value, to follow the line well. To do this, we will use a feedback control circuit. So we will use PID control. Here we have the desired value, the value that we always want to obtain. Then we have the current value that we are measuring, x subtracting the measured value from the desired value gives the error. For example, if a measurement of 2 is made, that is, the robot is located in the dark place, the error is equal to 3. 
We give this error to the controller, which depends on this equation. Then the output of this control is given back to the motors, and the robot deals with a realistic environment. There are a lot of external influences, such as the friction of the gear of the motors or an irregular floor, and this is what we refer to as Z, noise. The PID control equation basically consists of three parts. We have the P control part, then the I control part, and then the D control part. So for P control, we have this coefficient KP, which we multiply directly by the error. As for I control, we integrate the error over time and multiply it by the coefficient key. As for D control, we multiply the coefficient KD by deriving the error over time or the change in error over time. We change the speed of the two motors according to the value of Y or the control output. For the speed of the left motor, we add Y, and for the speed of the right motor, we subtract Y. In the previous part, I discussed how to control the movement of the robot, rotate the robot, by controlling the speed of the two motors. You can refer to the video to learn more about this. By changing the speed of the motors, the robot's path is changed. For example, we take Kp equal to 10, while the other coefficients equal 0. In the dark place, we have the error equal to 3, so we multiply Kp by the error. This gives us a value equal to 30. While in the case of the sensor located in the light place, we have an error value equal to minus 3, and the controller output will give a value equal to minus 30. When we apply this to the speed of the two motors, our motor speed will become the normal speed, which we define as normal speed. For example, in this case, I defined it as 70. We will add this y to the speed, so it will become 100. While the speed of the right motor, we will subtract this value from it, so it will become 40. This means that the speed of the left motor is greater than the speed of the right motor, and this means the robot is rotating to the right. If the sensor is located in the light place, then we will add minus 30 to both the right and left speed. So we have 70 plus minus 30 will become 40, and 70 minus minus 30 will become 100. This means the robot will rotate to the left. Thus, the speed of the two motors will be controlled according to the error measured by the sensor. At the code level, we have this sequence. First, the robot performs a calibration, where it turns to the left and then measures the value of the dark place. Then it turns to the right and measures the value of the light place. Then, the average value is calculated from these two values, which means the measurement value at the edge level. Then it reads the sensor value and in parallel calculates the error and corrects this error using PID control. And so it repeats this loop. After completing the theoretical explanation of the project, I will now install the sensor on the robot, installing it mechanically on the robot, and I will also connect it electrically to the Arduino board, as shown in the following electrical diagram. As for the Arduino code, it is as follows. First, I added the necessary libraries, such as the wire library, which is used to communicate via the I2C protocol, then the AF motor library, which is a library for controlling motors via the Arduino motor shield board. The Adafruit underscore TCS34725 library is a library for controlling the color sensor. I then configured the sensor by setting the integration time to 2.4 milliseconds and increasing the gain by 4. I then defined the motor control pins DI underscore A and DI underscore B to determine the motor direction and PWM underscore A and PWM underscore B to determine the motor speed. I also defined the PID control parameters and gave them these values, and I kept changing the values until I found a suitable line trace as this varies depending on the robot and the environment it is in. I also defined this speed, the basic speed of the motors at which the motors move. Then I defined the average value that is set between the black and the white surface. Then I defined these variables to calculate the sensor error. As for the setup function, I activated the serial connection to display the values on the computer. 
Then I checked for the presence of the sensor TCS34725 and then called this function calibrate sensor to calibrate the sensor and measure the values for the black and white surfaces. Then we have the main function, loop, where we read the values from the color sensor and then calculate the error, subtracting the read value from the average value that we calculated through calibration. Then we collect the errors for integration. After that, we calculate the rate of change in error, differential. After that, we calculate the correction based on the PID control equation, where we use the coefficients and multiply them by the error, the sum of the errors, integral, then the rate of change of the error, and we use this correction to adjust the speed of the motors. Then I have a calibration function. So I rotate the robot to the dark place and then I measure it. Then I rotate the robot to the lights place and take its measurement. Then I add the two values and divide them by two to get the average value. This function is specific to moving the motors. It controls the direction and speed of the motors and also determines the motor speed using the PWM signal. After finishing explaining the code, I uploaded it to the Arduino board, then conducted a test, placing the robot on the edge of the white line. I also changed the parameters of the PID control until I found the appropriate ones. As you can see, the result is as follows. And so we reached the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed and benefited from it. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel to stay in touch with everything new. Share your thoughts and questions with us in the comments. Until our next meeting,